fucking suit and trousers from China Mall. <laughs> Makes you want to shit anything with you guys. You, you oh, guys is this what Shaka wore before he beat the British? <laughs> you guys are jokes. Good lad. You guys are jokes, and I can't wait for he Twitter. He probably kicked them, for Twitter hit them to, with a spinning to, kick. To actually dominate and cancel you guys. Now we see ya. We see ya. Look, if I'm kidding, we'll see ya. We'll see ya. I got trained, guys. People love me. Not one song. Are you counting down? Clapping? No. It's your call. It's your call. You're the editor, so. Are we good to roll? We're being rolling. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Added a little explosion there <laughs> just to balance out the gayness. <laughs> Bit of toxic masculinity. <laughs> so this guy's wearing Zulu trousers. That uh, Shaka Zulu wore to the Battle of St. Juana. Good, good lad. So, my story. So, Sia, did, did, Zulu, Sia, did Zulu people, did Zulu I, people I, make I, these pants I back in the up, day? I ended up calling with, lying. with leather. I was lying. Man. Hey, I, 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 I said to Ezra, hey, Wuti, hey guys, they're, they're you out. Can't, of, you can't discuss hey, that stuff on camera, bro. They're it's out of ice tropes. Ice tropes. And we don't have much time on the memory card. You know. So, anyway, that's my story. Papuzi Prutan. I hope all of you guys are well. Uh, a warm welcome to Pen and Pen. Um, today's show is going to be a bit heavyish, and I apologize for that. But we want to thank all of you for all your comments. We read all the comments when you guys tell this guy all the time. Pen, please let Pen finish all his points. We appreciate you. Um, we apologize for going off tangent every now and then. We actually get quite <laughs> excited once in a while, um, and I think we deviate. But we're going to try and always steer it back. Um, more than anything, man, shout out to the guys at Amped um, that support us, production. Shout out to DJ Smoo. You know, um, I don't think we appreciate you, DJ Smoo, enough. And I know <laughs> I'm guilty of it at times. I know sometimes we criticize with Smoo, it's because we're human. It's because we actually hold him to a high standard and we want him to win. Because if he wins, then the rest of us win. So, Smoo, we love you, bro. And again, thank you so much for what you've done for me. And then it's this guy's turn to thank me for what I've done for him. Please greet Abashali. Moloeni nonke makai. Ni grand. Salmonan, 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 guys. I hope everyone is well. Um, thanks so much for all the comments. Thanks so, uh, for engaging, for sharing, for liking. Truly, truly appreciate um, all those two cents that uh, you guys throw at us. So keep it's on actually coming. four cents per view, but sure. Yeah, four, Let's go with two cents. Siabo Mangueta, guys. We truly appreciate that. Um, Man, DJ Smu, we love you. We love um, putting this guy on the platform and then again, domino effect. So, see, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But uh, thanks so much. I appreciate you, though. Looks like, we, um, looks like we're about to a cappella. A one, a two, a one, two, three, get ooh, um, Oh, that's a cool one. A lot of men today are. Um, looking up to personalities such as Jordan Peterson, mm. Andrew Tate, Joe Rogan, Kevin Samuels. may rest in peace Kevin Samuels. And the last time we sat together, one of the topics we were meant to cover was male depression, uh, male suicide, I guess, and the struggles that men undergo. Like I said, it's a bit of a heavy topic. Um, and I think maybe we're gonna unpack some of the reasons, or maybe I'll, I'll pass it on to Pinson to maybe share some of the reasons why he believes men get depressed. Um, my understanding of depression is that it is a mental disorder of sorts. Um, and for people that may not know, like, there's a definition, which includes words such as despondency, uh, dejection. It's essentially, it's when you're sad for longer than normal. Mm -hmm. And you normally lose appetite, you can't eat, you struggle with sleeping. Either you can't sleep at all, or you sleep too much. And the things that used to make you happy, don't make you happy anymore. And this lasts for a prolonged period. If you look at, for example, in particular black people and the centuries that black people have been under oppression, a lot of people believe that black people have been depressed for centuries and they can't even see that and get themselves out of it. And that's how it manifests into things like alcohol abuse, drug abuse, uh, some of the ways we maybe hurt our women, our children, some of the ways we just live our lives. But um, I think I'll stop there and allow Penson to maybe share some of his views around depression and what he called things uh, causes depression. Mm. Um, as it, I was asked, what, what, what qualifies me to talk about some of the things that I talk about? And it's a fair question. It's failure, dog. 
I, I, I think what qualifies me and you is because we failed so much. Yeah. When people say what qualifies me to talk about depression is because I've gone through the lowest of the lows. Have you been depressed before? So yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that point because yeah. I think a lot of us don't know what it is. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's only once I got into my thirties where I, I finally understood what heartburn was. You know. <laughs> when you're young and you're fit, you fit, you, you heartburn. Oh, what's heartburn? You know. But once you actually get of age, you start realizing it's oh, something is not sitting well. Yeah. And in your younger years, in my younger years, I, I, I used to get sad, like everybody gets sad when things don't go your way, you know. But then your recovery from that was fairly quick, mm. you know. So if you lose a sports game within X many hours, then you find again. Sure. Or if you get a message from a certain female or whatever the case may be. Always nice. Always for the bounce back. Quick, quick one, you know. Um, it hit me in the mid 2015 there i lost i've lost three friends through suicide you know um and all of that is guys who are married and have kids all you of know, them all of them all three of them you know all three of them and i said this we went, we went for a walk with uh, with your sister for i went for a walk with your sister this morning sorry sorry someone was like why do you guys say your father because if you guys don't share father <laughs> we all know guys when, when your family members annoy you it's your mom yeah, yeah it's another sorry story. you were taking a walk yeah. with your sister yeah so and we saw this this group of like family so what look like husband wife kids husband wife kids husband wife kids. Yeah. so beautiful the picnic baskets and the prams and the and I said to Lungis Wutsi, um, you do know that it's those type of men that actually end up committing suicide. And she's like, why do you say that? And I go, think of Ricky Rick. Think of who, what's his name? Switch, Seth Switch. Ellen DeGeneres' DJ. Oh, what's his name? Switch, Snitch. It might be Switch. Switch. I'll get my phone. Carry yeah. on. So it's all those guys who, on the outside, you know, we think everything is amazing. We don't understand the pressures that these men are under, you know. If you're a single guy who's working a job, whatever the case is, you know, your, your pressures are very, very different from a man who's providing for a household, for a man who has kids to look after, a wife to look after, for all this pressure that is on his back. I never understood that until I was placed in that space. Sorry, you know? Stefan or Stephen Laurel. Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Sorry. Used to be a DJ on right. Ellen DeGeneres' show. Yeah. So, so, until, suicide as well. so until I started having that pressure yeah. put on me, those expectations to put on me, the, the my understanding of depression changed for you know. Uguti, even when you said if you lose a rugby game and you a single guy, you know, and you stay by yourself, let's say, you lose a rugby game or you broke and you've got zero rand in your account. Yeah. It's very different from me who's got three kids, you know. So me being sad, me being broke. When I walk in, the kids say, Baba, we're hungry. Mm. I've, I've got two, two, 250 in my account. Sure. I've got nowhere to go. We, we're hungry. Yeah. So, so think about you as a single guy who's broke, chilling by yourself. Ne? Your stomach going. Oh. Think of me walking into a space and that pressure. Yeah. So once I started feeling different. Once I started at work, the pressures were different. Um, the, 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 the not winning a proposal or, or, or going across the line with a certain campaign, it just felt different. The sadness was prolonged over and over. And it was the, compounded by the dependence. Compound by the dependence, because people that depend on you, people that have these expectations, don't care how you feel. When, when, when ooh, I think it was Cristiano uh, who lost the child, you know, mm. Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. People were still expecting him to score goals. Yeah. So now you can just imagine if he was a single guy and he took a penalty that could win him the game. As a single guy, then he loses. You know. But now add the fact that he's just lost a child. Add the pressures of now the world as, the, as he becomes a bigger brand. Yeah. The, the, the investors in him, the owners of the club. Add all of that and he now understands, Woody, should I score this goal? Because I had a conversation with the owners, there'll be bonuses for the team. Yeah. There'll be this, there'll be that, there'll be expectation. I know how it will boost this and that. It, it, it's so compound. So him missing that is so different because now he's trending on Twitter. Mm. Now people are burning his jersey. Mm. Now people are swearing at his wife. Now people are busy throwing rubbish at his kid's school. 
might, all might, of that. There might be death threats if the, people bet enough money for him to score and they maybe lost the, something. The, the, the pressure is different. Yeah. And for me, it just meant to the pain becomes different. Mm -hmm. If you're a single guy, no offense, I'll just keep coming back to this, you know, and you've been dating with Sissy for, let's say, two weeks and you find out she's cheating on you. It's very different if you're a married guy who's been married for 15 years and find out that your wife is cheating. That pain is different. The way that you are pivot and can adjust from it is very different. You know, your sadness is different. The way that you react to it is different. So give me, until a guy has felt that, Uti, food has lost taste, you have no appetite, you, you, you don't know you're up from your down, you don't know if it's Wednesday or Saturday, you don't know your ass from your elbow, you know, you, 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 you are in a constant daze or haze, and as the is and geese, where you're just existing but not here. You know, once you get into that, it's, it's a different feel. Once you get out of that, you go, where the fuck was I for the past two weeks? My two questions, one being, have you ever been depressed? And number two, I'd like you to, let's start with that one. Have you ever been depressed? I, I believe I have multiple times. Self-diagnosed? Self Self-diagnosed. What, what made you feel that you were depressed? It's post. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking so that maybe someone has had the same yes, symptoms so, as you. So, 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 what, what made me diagnose it as depression mm. is when I got out of it. So, Uti, where the hell was I before? Yeah. You know, where, where was I? Was I floating? I don't know where I was. I was chowing mushrooms. I don't know what space I was in. Chowing mushrooms? I mean, where I should chow. Is that just an example? Yeah, we are hallucinating. Oh, no, but you need to be explicit because people might think you're taking some Oh, games. no, I'm not. I'm you not. To speak a bit slower, bro. Okay. This is a very important so, topic. So, again, it was me constantly feeling heartache. And pain yeah for a long time what's a long time so for me it was about two weeks okay straight. me not knowing how to deal with it yeah me not being able to sleep during at, at night and not being able to stay awake during the day mm. you know that's how I felt yeah I had no appetite to the point where I just felt like I could eat whatever like it was just out of body experiences constantly yeah. for me you know um, I felt distant from those that I love. Mm. I felt so far from them. Even when my kids would come in and love me, I'd, I'd hold them, but it just, I'm, I'm in my own fields. I'm lost in me. And what's worse is that it's almost like I, I don't know who to talk. I'm not even considering talking to someone. I think that's such a distant thing. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm so far away from everyone in the world. The, the, the thought of talking to someone doesn't exist in my space, mm. you know? Because people are like, why don't you talk to someone? I'm alone on the moon. You've, you've been hit by a car, you're on the road, and someone's like, go get help. You're like, <laughs> I can't walk. At where? I don't know where I'm at. It's dark, it's, it's, it's raining, it's, it's, a, it's in a foreign space, yeah. you know? And again, again, I didn't know where I was. Like, it's like you get hit by this bus uh, emotionally, Mentally, you feel something else. Physically, I enjoy training. I didn't train, I didn't go to the gym, I didn't nothing because I'm just in this space. Mm -hmm. And even when I did force myself um, that, and it happened close to the end, like it was just, I literally sit there like this. How many times do you think you've experienced this? About three, four times. How, from the first time when you look back and you realize that maybe I was depressed, how did you change your behavior? I, 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 think, I, I think it. I only accepted or acknowledged the depression like yeah. a third of a fourth time. So what would you do now if you were to go into the same dark space? So for me, it is have to, me, this is different. Me, because I'm so privileged to have my family close by. You saw all of a sudden a ramp of me coming through and chilling. Mm. Not knowing why I'm chilling, but I'm just chilling. Because I'm realizing, nah, I, I, I need to be with people that love me unconditionally. Mm. I'm not saying people that love me outside of that are not important, they are, you know. But the pressures are different, you know. The pressures that Umam puts on us is very different from, let's say, our partners put on us. Sure. You know, it's very, very different. So for me, I needed to be with family. Mm. I needed to be outside, you know. So this whole thing of working from home, I got to the point where I was like, screw it, I need to go to the office. I need to be amongst people, mm. you know. I changed, I think I unfollowed about... 800 people on Instagram. Why? I just, I just didn't enjoy the diet that I was consuming. 
you know, I just, it just made me feel a type of way. What do you mean by guys? So I'd see people popping bottles, mm -hmm. girls looking a type of way. That to me just didn't boost me. So I needed to have a fresher look on life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I started making shoguti. I, I've got my oats so easy in the morning and I make it and I eat. You know, it doesn't matter. So give me those just that being with family, you know, people that I love unconditionally. It was me getting out. Mm -hmm. I have to get out, you know, get out, go, get to touch. You know, mm. I stopped training weights and I just play touch. Sure. Play touch until my kidneys fucked up and I play and I'm there with the guys. That's and dangerous though. That's, that's okay. I can deal with physical pain. What's hard is the emotional mental stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, so once I'd gone out and been with family, once I went out and started running with Amachita, I had those laughs. Because mm. uh -uh. you know, made sure um, I'm, I'm eating. You know, I'm eating, I'm staying hydrated. Those things to me really helped. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just get me back into the spot. Because then you realize, Witty, you're not a hero, though. You, you so, what I'm hearing, hero. so what I'm hearing, because the, the question that I'd like you to answer after this is why you never went for medical, professional help. You, you, you felt a form of prolonged pain, heartache, sadness, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, your appetite got affected. Mm. So if someone is finding themselves not eating, not eating the way they could, mm, mm. even though there's food, you've got no appetite, you're not eating, struggling to sleep, maybe you're overthinking, whatever the case may be. The people that love you, care about you, may actually feel like extra weight and baggage mm. and pressure. And what I'm hearing in terms of pot potential solutions for you and maybe for others out there is make sure that you're eating. Mm. Even if you don't have an appetite, eat something. Mm. Go to people, you say to immediate family, mm. go to people that light your candle, mm. that recharge you mm. and almost have no expectations yeah. of you. That give do, you the strength to fight. Do physical exercise, I yeah. guess. Be a, like run, connect. Because I can only imagine the going and laughing with the guys and then mm. going, let's say, let's say you're a single guy, mm. going home and, and being alone. <laughs> Or going, or, or going home and then having all this pressure and the pressure yeah one well, because it's one thing to go home to a room by yourself yeah versus going home and then having that weight put on mm. yeah well, that, that's very different so the reason why i chose not to do like a therapy um and never, then, never mind therapy just speaking to, to someone to go get diagnosed oh okay. to go to a professional and be um, like look i think i have depression what do you think and get a professional opinion okay so step back and i'm not uh, and guys listen i'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination so i studied psychology okay i understand certain steps to a point you know and i understand when you sit with these people a lot of them not all are regurgitating certain concepts that they learned through their western textbooks yeah but okay i post all of this realized that I just needed to be in a healthier space mm. yeah, one. so that it can help me mentally. Okay. Yeah, one. Not saying that the people I was with were unhealthy. It was just what sometimes you need to change mm. your environment. If you're in the rain, it's great to get out of the rain and just get a bit of sun. Sure. Yeah, one. So that's what I felt. Yeah, one. And that's how I chose to. Sometimes going to the GP is phenomenal most mm. of the time. But sometimes when you've got a headache, you know it when you go to the GP, they'll say take a panada. Yeah, one. Mm. And I feel, Guti, at times, when you speak to these people, mm. they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You go get professional help as a black male, and you're going into a space where it is 70% plus female. Okay. And I speak about pressures that females put on me. Tell me that person won't come with a female bias to how they speak to me and how we need to engage. Mm. It's impossible for them to detract that. It's almost like me speaking to a female who's coming to me telling me that she's cheating on her man, who is paying for her house, paying for her kids, paying for her car, who makes sure what he provides and everything, he works his ass off, and now she's coming and she's trying to be uh, offloading and wants me to... Mm. I'll, I'll feel a type of way as a man, Yabon. Mm. let alone the fact that some it's a white lady coming to me. Mm. There's a huge gap in that. So I couldn't go to them because I've, I, I don't truly believe in what I've studied, one. And then you also can't go to those people that you love because you, you, you fear letting them down and disappointing them. And then the real thing of being embarrassed. Mm. That you respect 
you, you feel like you're letting them down and it's embarrassing. What's he? Hey, I'm going through this. I'm going to play when we're alpha men, most. I'm going to do when we're rookie, most. How are you going to go and say, what you're dealing with Isham Tas and Jaina? You know, because then they're going to ask you, good, he ninking, and then you won't be able to answer. He, he mal. No, if it's clean, if it's not 5,000. He ninking. He let's say again, she a young guy. He ninking. Now, now you don't understand how you're going to answer the problem because it's, it's more of an internal pain. It's a mental dissonance that you don't know how to deal with. Mm. Yeah, you understand? So I'm, 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 picking up two, I'm picking up two concerns from my side. Sure. Number one, it seems like you've built yourself into becoming this alpha male, sure. which almost becomes pressure that you've put on yourself. Yeah. Not, not, not just pressure that I've put on myself, which is very true, yeah. but it's pressure that's also been put on me. That's fine. And I'm not yeah. speaking to that. You've okay. raised that. Sure. I'm raising the concern of you're Rocky, you're Mr. Yeah. You Mr. Know. T. And I'm only raising this from a, from a perspective of maybe guys also need to be careful of what brand they are building. Mm, 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 because mm. when you go out into the world and you've built this brand, people are going to have these expectations. Fact. And you'll be like, you guys are putting pressure on me. Like, well, you well, kind of mm. put it on yourself as well. You said you're the greatest. And the second thing, look, as much as you're a psychology major, um, <laughs> I've been to therapy twice. Mm. And maybe I'll share my, I, I don't think we'll have enough time today to share my thoughts. We, we can just speak about you. I, I, think, I think you should give it a shot. Not, uh, not because it will solve problems, mm. but so that you can come back and say, I've been to therapy mm. and I've picked up these are the responses. I'm not happy. Uh, you and I know Peshe Atuma, and he said that he intentionally looked for a black male. Yeah. So that becomes maybe one of the ways to move mm. around. I want someone that I'm comfortable with. Mm. You know, I sat with um, Bianca Costa mm. and she was saying... <laughs> she intentionally did not want a black therapist because she was like, her understanding of black people and experience to what you were saying about the female white bias. Mm. She was like, I have a feeling black people are going to be like, this thing you're complaining about is nothing. So she intentionally Eastern. looked for someone who is yeah. non-black. Yeah. You know, um, I think we should try it. And I'm only saying this because my fear is this. You're a psychology major. Mm. I'd like to think you're mentally strong. Mm. I'd like to think you have a good family and support base in general. People like de you. De debatable with the family part. Okay. What about the family part? Well, what must I tell no, mommy no, no. about you? <laughs> um, a lot of other guys maybe do not have the privileges you have. Yeah, fact. So if they're going to be like, yeah, Pinson actually said a lot of these therapists are female. And you might find there's a guy that actually needs to speak to a white female. Because she might be the person that will help him heal. Because and that's if he goes to a black male, he might say... And I'm just two push ups. And the white female will be like, Have you ever cried? I remember Trevor Noah between the scenes on the Daily Show saying, When it comes to men, men only understand intimacy to mean sex with yeah. a woman. Yeah. Now, with the feminization agenda of men, yeah. a lot of these conversations become quite debatable. Mm. Is what he was raising valid or? It's actually feminizing us more. But he was mm. basically saying men don't have spaces where they can get a hug mm. without it following into sex. Mm. Where when they meet other men, they're just like, bro, I just want to chill with you and just what you were saying. I just, mm. you'd come and visit us as your family. Sure. And you just by being in the space, you get a recharge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, go yeah. to the guys mm. and actually just, let's not go pop bottles and get his way and what, like, sure. let's just... Just, just chill with me, bro. Can yeah. I, can I, can I hug you? Can I? I know some of the Christian brothers. May I pray for you, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Something in my spirit just said I must come to you. Like, hey, 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 tell your spirit to get away from me. <laughs> you know. So um, that that's just going to be my my thought. Some of the concerns, and I'd like to hear your views. Yeah. In people that get depressed, is the consequences. Yeah. You're speaking about you don't know the space you're in. It was dark. It was hazy. Yeah. There are people that in that darkness and haziness. A lot of casual sex, a lot of Tinder, sure. swipe right, a lot of drinking, mm. especially without eating, yeah. um, experimenting with drugs because you're mm. trying to numb the pain. You want yeah, to, I want this pain course. to stop. Of course. Um, what are your thoughts around some of the consequences that, not yourself now, that other guys take and how maybe they can try in some way to work around these things? No, man. I can even chat about myself. Like Everybody knows I, I enjoy the drink, the devil's nectar. 
you know, angels uh, piss. piss. <laughs> it has to be piss. <laughs> it can't be angel tears. It has to be piss, you know. Um, but it does numb a bit. But be it, honest, be honest. It numbs. It's no, nice. Like, 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 like here I've heard I'm, people that drink, because I don't drink. I've heard so, people that drink so, say, say, Baba, when I'm... It's nice, bro. Yeah, it, it, it numbs a bit in the sense, Guti, you, you, unless you're out there clubbing, which I don't do, you know, I don't enjoy umseen to So I'll sit and I'll sip on something and leave, ne? Mm-hmm. But give me, it never really got me out of anything because I'm still there a bit mellow now in my own thoughts. Mm. Yeah, you understand what I'm trying to say? Which is then even more dangerous now because yeah, yeah, it could get into worse. Sure. You know, that's where the, the suicide, you know, the S word. Because you're alone. Because now you're a... You, that's you, what I was saying about you, single guys. You're you, alone. You, you're in a room full of people, but you're still alone. That can happen. I, I, I think people also don't understand that because you're in a room full of people and you're still alone, mm. you know. Um, so give me I was lucky because it never got to that point. I never got those thoughts. But it, it's, it's the next step, you know, where many guys, it starts happening, you know. So for me, I felt low and I felt down, but I never got to the point where I said, okay, I need an exit. Yeah, I understand. So yes, alcohol can numb the pain. Yes, abashama drugs. Yes, abantu aba heavy casual sex, that also. Mm. But give me, I just felt like a lot of external things is what got me here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. So it's those external things that got me here. Sure. Let me actually get those external things out my way mm. so that I can actually focus on me to get out of here. Sure. You know, suicide is a real thing. Suicide is a painful thing. Depending on the websites or the, 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 the source, it's either, what is it? For every one female, there's three M- males. Men four are four males. to five times more, more likely to commit. Weirdly enough, in the same data, women attempt suicide way more way than more. men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But men, because yeah. obviously men get things right. We get, we you get know, shit done. We kind of, you know. We know what to do. <laughs> Sorry for the bad joke. But women attempt suicide much more than men. I don't know if it's three times. Yeah. But in terms of fully executing it, men are yeah. four to five. Men commit suicide four to five times more than women. It's crazy because people think, Wuti, these are American stats or stats from the West. Gandhi, these are South African stats. Mm. You know, th- these are people here. Yeah. You know, and it's obviously taboo. I've got a good friend, um, had a good friend who committed suicide uh, last year. RIP. And he committed suicide on the Tuesday. Mm. And the and the police were saying, no, this guy was hanging himself. And the police were saying, no, this guy was hanging himself. You understand? Because there's that thing of it's embarrassing as a, as a family, as a community. We can't now say he committed suicide. And Amahat and Abant Bendawa could tell you the story. That when see this is a situation, there was infidelity by her side, there was a child involved. This is a very alpha male, Zulu, traditional, big commanding of the presence of a man, you know, and the, his, his partner cheated on him, is that, the story. That's the rumors that came okay. through. Those are the rumors that came And they out. had a child. And they had a child, a okay. very young child. So now there's also Guti, who's the father okay. of that young child, you know. So all of these things are coming out. And these are things that we are told by that know obviously the family to, pro- to protect them said, no, he got stabbed, you know. We don't talk about these things. You know, we don't talk about these things. We don't talk about what causes men to mentally snap. Mm. You know, there's, there's this whole notion around infidelity because people are cheating fucked up. But there's this notion that woman cheating and male cheating is, is, is equal. You know, we, we might get into that in a different day. You know, give me that notion makes as much sense as a man slapping a woman and a woman slapping a man being the same. You we'll, know. we'll have to talk about it another day. On a later stage. Because but, that, that but bias that you have is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous bias. And I, I don't support it. That's personally. okay. That's, yeah. that's okay. But to give me... You're saying, you're saying male and female cheating is not the same. I'm, I'm saying, give me, male and female cheating is, this, is as same as men and women hitting each other. Slapping each other. Yeah, well, that's I what I'm trying you. to say. So you. we can unpack that on a different day. Sure. So it's, it's, it's a gateway to talk about what are these triggers mm. that get men to snap. Sure. Yeah, bon. So it could be infidelity. It could be the finances. Yeah. You know, it could I'd, be I'd like you to, to stop there because I, I do want you to unpack 
or wants us to unpack the potential triggers that guys have to watch out for, especially black South African men, yeah. of which it affects a lot of other men. Yeah. I want to raise this point. When you raise black families that don't want to tell the world that our child committed suicide. Yeah. We have a situation, even with mental illnesses and mm. depression in particular, where in the past, where we didn't have Western medicine, psychologists, psychiatrists, black people would obviously say it's witchcraft. Mm. It's voodoo. Mm. There's mm. a girl that gave you mm. muti, mm. and that's why you're in the state. Yeah. Where yeah. Yeah. Someone, Sandra Semfe, and etc. Yeah. So it may be that some of these families, when you are depressed, all they say is that someone cursed you. Sure. Number two, when you eventually take your life, mm. some black families will not want to say you killed yourself because in their heads, it's like there's no such thing yeah. as a person killing themselves. Someone killed them. Mm. It is the voodoo, the voodoo, the papu, the, the, the mm. someone maybe poisoned him, mm. someone cursed him, and that's why this thing happened. So they'd rather tell the story because mm. it is quite taboo in an African sense to say someone took their life because... Mm. From an African perspective, that thing doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it hasn't been explained outside of mm. you know, witchcraft mm. as, a, as a bucket or as a, as, a, as, a, as a package. And maybe that becomes another conversation about how do we help? Because the Western side, we're going to say, tries to help, mm. has antidepressants and the like, and we can speak about remedies later. Yeah. But the reality is, even with the psychiatrists, psychologists, even with the antidepressants, sure. some of these people still take their lives. And can Western medicine explain that? Where African people are going to say, we told you this guy was cursed. It doesn't matter what you do. If the curse is not broken, mm. they will still go the way they were supposed to go. Mm. I just wanted to raise that part. You can speak on it, but I'd like you to start with... The, the uh, triggers. The triggers. Why, what causes men... I mean, all men, not just black men, but what causes men to fall into a depression and to potentially think of and maybe even execute mina, taking their mina, lives? Mina, mina, for me, it's just the pressure. I just, I just really feel that the pressure, not just for me, just general, just generalize the much, just gets too much, you know. And what people don't understand is that the higher you climb, the higher the pressure. You know, there's climb, two, climb what? The success, uh, okay. fame, whatever the case may be, the closer you get to Cristiano level, the more pressure that's on you. Mm. You know, people assume, Muguti, oh, now that you have become MD of a company and you have more money, you have less pressure. You go, yeah, one. Yeah. Ganti, there's more now. You know, I, I have more, to. More stakeholders. There's more stakeholders that I have to look yeah. after. There's more, it's more, more, more. So if I was, um, I, I, I don't know. If, if, I was, if I was scared of failing then let, as an let employee, me make an example. imagine me as a CEO. If you're, if you're a first team sports player at your school, you play in a team of 11, 15 guys in front of stands of maybe 200 kids. Yeah. You get to varsity and all of a sudden you play for your team, you play for a stadium and the entire varsity. Stadium maybe has 2,000 kids. Yeah. You get to Springbok level now, Ellis Park maybe... 60,000. 60,000 people. Yeah. And maybe there's an entire globe that's watching you. So, yeah. so the pressure, pressure is, saying, is, the pressure is, gets is very different and it doesn't stop. You know, mm. I, I tell people, who say, it's amazing to have a child. If you have a child, it's great. There's a lot of pressure on that child. Mm. Now imagine having two of them. You know, the yeah. pressure changes. It doesn't double, it triples. Yeah. Because you, you're looking at so many other variables. You and child one, you and child two, child one and child two. All those variables, it it quadruples. Mm. Yeah, and the mom. And the mom now. Grandparents. Now the mom. And then you have three kids. And then you have, yeah. ah, 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 yeah, the pressure differs. And then you start a business. And then you... You have your staff and the team and the, the staff have their own kids. And now all of a sudden this person in the, in, in the team says, you know, but the you child know, is sick. Yeah, the child is sick. But you know, Guti, there's a, there's a deadline that we need to meet. Mm. And they can't be here because they need to look after their child. But this is the only person who has this role and can do this. Mm. So now we need to find a way to speak to client who's already putting you under pressure. All these things are compound. Mm. Yeah, one. All these things are compound and the, and the suppliers are asking for their money because you guys are two, two months behind mm. on our, our compound and you still have to go home and home, the washing machine has, still hasn't been fixed. Mm. You know, therefore your washing is not, and you see it in there and you're like, shit, I'm meant to wear shirt and tie tomorrow because it's, but the clothes are there because the washing machine that you haven't done, how going to no machine, you still haven't fixed it. Black tax. Black tax. Your mom is Ordinary sick. tax. There's ordinary tax. There's, it's, it's all speeding fines, you know. So those are the things, the pressures of men 
I'm not saying women don't feel their pressure. They've got different pressures, you know. But it's, it's not, society doesn't have the pressure of women having to provide for her man. It's debatable. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the space. Highly, highly debatable. Because I was going to say, a lot, of, a lot of women have similar pressures to men today. And their pressures normally get compounded because people like you and I, yeah. when there's kids, yeah. you're saying balls, boy. We're out, I, whereas I, the woman I, generally stays. I, that, that's perfectly fine. I'm saying women have different pressures. No, I'm, I'm, I'm arguing yeah, that right. a lot of women today have similar pressures. All the examples you made, I, the work, the child is sick, the washing machine, a lot of single I, women, I, 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 a lot of I, women I, I with agree, men that I, aren't there. I'm agreeing with you. Mm. I'm agreeing with you in that case. I'm saying should she, that Mbogoto that's doing all of these things alone, should she find a partner? Why do you call her Mbogoto? Because I mean, she's strong. That's what, we, that's what we've been told so to call So Mbogoto is equal to a man is what you're saying no, that's in terms not, of pressure? No, that, that, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Listen, to, listen to my point. What I was trying to say is that all those pressures that she has, mm. which is phenomenal that she's hold, not phenomenal, but kudos on her for handling them. Mm. The moment she gets into a committed relationship, that's what I'm trying to talk about. With the moment she gets married, the moment she finds a, 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 a great guy, mm. she will want to offload those pressures on him. The reality is the stats show that men aren't making that much money or that much that, more than women. That's perfectly fine. So she so, might want to, but, but it's not there. Now, now he's under that pressure. So, she's also under so, pressure. But you're not sharing what I'm saying. Sure. I'm saying which we go to the club. Mm. Ne? I've got 20 rand. Sissy's got 25 rand. Yeah. Ne? yeah. I've got 20 rand. Sissy's got 25 rand. Yeah. There's a pressure. Societal. Societal pressure. For men to provide. From, from her point, from my expectations on myself, yeah. that... I need to buy drinks. Of course. And I need to stretch this 20 bucks. And ladies night, so, ladies getting free. So she's getting in Ladies free. getting free before I, 10 I, p.m. Yeah, but I have to do this. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, she's under pressure because now nah, she's broke. She's under pressure because she's also trying to make it, make means happen. Yeah. She's under pressure. But the same like me. Yeah. But yet when we get together, she wants to offload because I, there's an, not all sisters, but there's an expectation with now I need to provide that Long Island. Or that meal, to Uber her. I need to, uh, uh, uh. and that's what I'm trying to say, Guti. Those can become triggers, and that's uh, just one trigger. I was going to go to the. Well, I spoke about sure. infidelity. We'll, we'll go back to the triggers. Yeah. I want you to answer. Do you think that pressure on men to provide mm. is the reason why so many guys run away when a woman says she's pregnant? I think so, because they cannot handle the pressure. I, I, I think, Guti. It's and do you think if they stayed? they might end up in depression and take their lives. I, I, I truly believe, Uguti, men with resource. Now, when I'm saying resource, I'm not limiting it to money. So resource being time, uh, uh, commitment. Or family, family, friends that so, can assist. So, so men with resource, yeah, when, when, she, when he finds out Uguti Usis is pregnant, yeah. they tend to stay. Men with no resource, yeah. plus that pressure, tend to chuck, you know. Do you think that's the smarter thing to do than staying and potentially being depressed? I'm asking this because it's a sneaky question. It's a very, but I'm, it's I'm a asking very it because question. I'm asking it in particular for the women that are going to be watching this to understand that some of the guys that leave, and we're not saying it's right, it's very wrong. Yeah. The guys must be present. Yeah. Some of the guys that leave, some of the women that leave their kids with their, with the father or with their parents, yeah. they do it because if they stay, the pressure yeah, look, will break them. Yeah. Look. Um, that, that, that is a whole episode on its own. Um, Absolutely. I, 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 I would say go into the wild, build yourself, come back. Verse, and abandon your child. Verse, verse staying and destroying this lady way worse than you would have should you have left. Who gets to decide? Wait, I'm talking to the guy. I understand. Yeah. But you yeah. see, guys, I want to use that so, argument to be like, look, so Pinson I, said, I, 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 I if don't I don't know. abandon this child, I'm going to hurt I, you worse. I, I, I don't so know. So I have to go. I don't know who is to decide. Yeah. I'm just saying, Woody, this guy is either going to leave and then she's going to have to now carry all of this by herself. Which they do. Which they do. Yeah. Or this guy could potentially stay, destroy. We experienced that personally. And we, we, I prayed, wish Muti, I wish he had left. Yeah. I prayed, I wish my father had left. Versus him staying and destroying what... There was a lady, there was a lady, I made a video about present fam fathers and 
There was a lady who was like, her parents were married forever and she used to wish her father wasn't around as much on one of my YouTube videos. Because that's the reality. The, 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 the men are so broken. They're so broken mentally, financially, in spirit. They're so broken that they destroy. Here, yeah, this, 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 this lady who's already stretched, fighting, mm -hmm. da, 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 to a point where now that you've destroyed it, then the pressure can, and then he can kill himself as well. See if I saw him, murder, murder, The number suicide. of stories, you speak about married men who get depressed and take their lives. The number of men who kill their families mm. and take their lives. Yeah. Um, just a quick stat before you carry on with other triggers mm. um, that may cause depression. Um, on average, let's say the numbers are 16,000 men, 16,000 men get killed in South Africa. Mm. 4,000 women get killed in South Africa. Mm. Already this argument of femicide is so warped, but it's yeah. a conversation for another it day. Is what it is, yeah. It's propaganda and it's false. 16,000 men a year killed, 4,000 women a year killed. Mm. Half of them, 50%, are killed by their boyfriends and their husbands, which now speaks to this thing of, if the guy stays, That's, he might take your that, life. That might be the thing. If he had gone, he might still be alive. It's dangerous. But it's an important I, conversation. I, we are not promoting men running away and leaving their kids. That's not what we're promoting. What all I'm trying to say is that I would have preferred my own father to run away and leave. You only need to fix things back. Then how toxic he was in that space. Yeah, well, and I'm saying with you, there's many men who would, would the, 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 the mother with the child would be better off with the man not in the picture versus a toxic, broken man destroying the little that she has. Let me say this before you carry on with the triggers. Um, guys, if you, if you find out your girl is pregnant, uh, number one, you guys must talk. Number two, before you run away, bro, take it easy with the spikes. Um, <laughs> please try and, and sit down with your friends, especially your friends that already have kids. The two of you, go be like, who do you know that has kids? Someone your age, someone you know, go sit with them and be like, this is the situation. The guy's like, listen, I'm stressed, I'm broke, I'm a student, whatever. After speaking to them, if you can, I know sometimes it's difficult, go speak to your parents on both sides if they're willing. If not, mm. go speak to other older people that you trust. If possible, go find a social worker. A lot of social workers are free. Go to government departments, go to a, go to a hospital or a clinic and be clinic, like, yeah. we're looking for a social worker or we're looking for a therapist. We are stressed. And go and speak to people and as a guy especially, the woman can as well as a guy, tell the social worker I'd like to speak to you alone. And when you're there, explain, I want to run away because I don't know what to do. And only after you've assessed everything, make a decision. Whatever the decision is, including the woman, if you want to maybe get rid of the child or whatever the case may be. But don't just run, don't just leave the girl alone. Try to have the conversations before you run because there might be solutions. You'll be surprised. Your parents who told you if you ever bring back a child, you're on your own. Your parents will be like, listen, a child is a blessing from God. We will help. And that will alleviate so much and you'll be under less pressure. I'm sorry. Think, I, I think people just panic. Of course yeah, we panic. Guys, guys panic in nature. That's why we need to speak. And that's why we're having these conversations so that guys can reach out to us if you can. And if not us, like we said, find a social worker. Yeah. So Other the, triggers. So, so the triggers, again, if, if, if I... Think about the number of times I've spoken to guys who have beat up their partners. One of it is infidelity. There's something that happens to You've the male You've spoken cycle. to guys who have beaten up their partners? Yeah, I've spoken to guys. What, what they, was the they, reason they, for doing that? They, mentally, they switch off. What was the reason for you doing that? For me speaking. Speaking no, to them? No, where's the genre? Why are you You were trying to intervene and assist. No, I was trying to talk to him. To so assist. I, I don't know about assisting that dynamic. Okay. I wasn't trying to play two dogs. I feel I was trying to understand what my mate was going through. Why? Someone that's post that she was going to tell me to four years ago is what he did. I'm asking why you wanted to find out. Oh, so that I can better understand why we find ourselves in those spaces. And assist. So and that he doesn't do it again? Maybe it's to, it could be to assist him. Maybe it's more it's curiosity just, and research. Yeah, and just okay. me understanding myself. And getting to fully understand what it is when, as guys mentally, we just switch off. Okay. You know, it's like road rage. You know, you perfectly fine. You're listening to freshly crowned. Next thing, Lomchita cuts you off, and instantly you just. Uh, 
your brain switches off. You forget the fact that this person could, there could be a fight. You could kill him. You could go to prison. You everything just all that just disappears. You see red. You just see red. Things go black. And next thing, send Baba Nangamawashini with the guy. I wanna. Someone pulls out a gun. Someone dies. You we. All of those things don't factor in when you're busy chasing him and swearing him and cutting him off and all those things. And the guy that I was talking to, it's a very, it's a similar thing. Yeah, one. In that sense, we see they just switch off and they just see red. They just see red, and all of a sudden, she's speaking with you. This is what she's done. La 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 la. Boom. He doesn't know how to act. He panics or not panics, but he switches off. M says he panics. He, he switches off and he takes his life. Yeah. So that to me has been a huge trigger for people that I've spoken to. The friend of mine, the whole thing was around Uguti. She could have cheated on him, and then maybe in Ghana, Gone Akit's not his child, and he took his life. You know. Yeah. So it's that. It's the pressure, it's the infidelity. The pressure also speaking to the finance. Finance is a big trigger with us guys. The pressure to be able to provide for those that you love. You know. And when you realize Uti, you can't. Is that my camera? I but think so. I'm looking at the main camera. That's the wide shot, but I mean, sometimes you, you know, want to talk to the people. Yeah. So again, the financial pressure to provide, you know, as a man, when you don't have any money in your pockets, it's painful. You know, I, I, I know so many sisters that when they broke, they can still go out to the club and have a great time. You yeah. know, they can still go and find themselves trips where there are people who are willing and able to sponsor them on trips, on clothes. That are willing and able to sponsor their Ubers to work, and but a lot of guys, when you have nothing in your bank account, you know, you you lie and you say, ah, nya cool, I'm sick, you know, I'm at home, I'm sick, guys, I just can't come through. We know the guys broke, you know, at work you lie because you can't even get some money takes, you know. So again, there's those pressures as men, and you realize that you're stagnant, spans not happening, money's not coming in, I've got debt after debt after debt after debt. It becomes that in the dating market. A lot of guys understand Uti, when you're broke and you want to enter the dating market and you're broke, gents, so it's that, it's that pressure, that, that, that's a potential trigger. What is the solution to gents who are broke who don't have money? Realistically, like, I don't have money, dog. I, I hear you saying I must be depressed, I, but I don't have money. Tell me what to do. I, I did a video around broke men shouldn't date. Um, Yo. <laughs> and ultimately it was if they watch the video it speaks to before you look at being with external anyone just sit and work on yourself you know broke is debatable or subjective rather you know some guys with 50,000 end up consider themselves broke some guys with 50 and consider them broke so give me was all about working on themselves you know working on yourself First, so if you are broke, bro, work on yourself. Sit down, write down ideas on making money, a little bit of money. When your friends are out there drinking, you doing YouTube videos. You know, you doing YouTube videos, you making two cents of you. If um, your friends are out there drinking, you washing cars. You know, if your friends are out there drinking, you putting in extra hours, espanini, clocking in overtime. You know, so work on yourself. Find a way to bring in that extra bit of money. A hundred rand will go a long way when you broke, you know. And if you can compound that, if you're working as a bartender, you know, yes, you work whatever job, but if Friday, Saturday, you're working as a bartender, you're making that extra 500 bucks better than nothing over a month as an extra two tower, work on those little things from a financial point, you know. So I would look at it like that. Um, if you're fearful around infidelity, I'll pray for you because it's a reality of the world. You just need to work on yourself. You can't prevent another person out there to, 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 to cheat. It will me. I don't know how to work on that. I don't know how society can prevent that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can come with solutions. Um, but you can't prevent her from cheating, bro. What you can do is that you can create spaces where should some traumatic experience like that happen, you can, as Lumala suggested, speak to a professional, speak to your really close friends and family, um, and then when it comes to pressure, just stop putting pressure on yourself. You're not Rocky Balboa, you're not Mr. T, you're not Elon Musk. So it's okay to, 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 to fail. Um, learn and grow. And, and we fail, guys. We constantly fail. Just learn and grow. Learn and grow. I think we're going to have to... 
I think I will need to like write down some notes and, and come back and revisit this conversation. Sure. I've got a lot to say. I've also got my own stories to share. Yeah. Um, but it's very layered and it's very complex because the reality is also <laughs> people's sadness and pain is not the same. Yeah. Um, what could have triggered you, someone else will laugh at. Yeah. The way you bounce back from a, a hole, getting yourself out of a hole, may not work for someone else, it may Fact. make them worse. Fact. Someone will be like, look, when I was depressed, I started drinking and it helped a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I started taking these drugs or these psychedelics. Yeah. Some people might be like, yo, the casual sex was really dope. Yeah, till I met the one. Yeah, some people yeah. will be like, look, I went celibate and, and that helped. Yeah. I, on, the, on the topic you raised about uh, road rage, you reminded me of a Sadhguru. Uh, people have never seen videos by Sadhguru. Go research Sadhguru on YouTube, watch a lot of his videos. Very wise guru. I think he's from India. He speaks about that whole thing of your mind flipping and how for a lot of us, it lasts for a split second. Mm -hmm. If you ever get angry and you fuck, bang your phone down, you step out of it after a split second. Some of you bang a door, kick a door, punch a wall. For some people, it lasts a bit longer. Sure. So something like road rage, <laughs> Especially if you're a black South African man and you're arguing with a white, maybe Afrikaans man on the road, you're like, for my ancestors, I will show you. <laughs> you know, hey, there's a Nushara. It lasts a bit longer and you find yourself in this dark red space and your brain flips for maybe 30 minutes. For some people, it may be two hours. Mm. For some people, it may be five days, a week, two weeks. Mm. For some people, that thing loss almost forever that's when you're clinically insane and you can't snap back yeah. like basically you go somewhere you come back some go for long like i think of the lady that murdered flavor mm. i think she i think she stabbed him something like 19 times i'm not sure of the number but it was a lot you don't have to stab a person that many times which tells me that she was gone she was yeah. not there and she only snapped back at some point she could have carried on she would have gone for 50 times she could have if you think of the the gentleman who took the life of Karabu Mkwen, mm. where I don't know if he burnt her, but he put in a dustbin and he was trying to, that's when you're gone. That's what we call temporary insanity or whatever. And it's not meant to be a defense, by the way. It's just meant to be an explanation of the people that have known this person for 35 years, they will all say he will never do that, which means that was out of character. But Sadhguru speaks about that thing and he speaks about being able to bounce back quickly. Mm. And he says there's a place in India, funny enough, where I know in Limpopo there was a church, I think, and they shut it down, sadly, because of human rights violations, where drug addicts were taken and they were chained. And they were made to do hard manual labor, and apparently it was working. Parents would send their kids there. Yes. Now, for a lot of people, Sadhguru would say a lot of these people that are called mentally ill, they would be taken to these places, these temples, where they'd be fastened. And they'd be told, we'll release you when you're sane again. People are like, no, I'm fine now. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm okay. Great. I think I'm, I think I'm okay now. Uh, because I think when you're in that darkness, you become a wild animal. You know, so if you could be, when the triggers come, if you could be content, it's like being put in isolation sure. in prison. If we don't isolate this guy, he will maybe hurt other prisoners as well. That's the first thing I'm thinking of Sadhguru and some of the things he's, he's said about the mind. Now, I apologize for seeming rude on, on the phone. I was just researching some of the celebrities who have taken their lives. And I know one of the comments was, why do I keep fixating on time? The reality is like, we've got memory cards and we've only got so much data um, and we have to be cognizant of time. When you guys have donated more, you can buy more cards, buy more equipment. Um, so I just need to be cognizant of that. And you know, the production crew, they've got other work to do. So we also have to consider them. Um, before we forget, like without closing the show off yet, uh, Ubabu Patrick Shai took his life. Ricky Rick took his life. WHP Chablani took his life. Um, Twitch, as we mentioned earlier. Um, as far as the police reports go, Anele uh, Tembe, the late, the fiance, the late fiance of the late Kenan Forbes, aka, took her life as well. There are so many people in our own families. My brother mentioned three of his friends. I've got uh, two, three people that I know personally who took their lives as well. It can change in a split second. And we will not be able to save everyone. But we have to try. Uh, David Coggins is another great resource. Someone who talks about building calluses around your mind. It's almost like gymming your mind. 
Um, I remember Tupac said, um, there's going to be some stuff you're going to see that's going to make it hard to smile in the future. I was holding my brother's hand. Um, I don't know how old we were. <laughs> and we were at my father's home in Emadate, Township Section 4, where you can say that my father used to breed greyhounds, his race dogs. And we get back in the evening. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to summarize it. We witnessed, at our very young age, we witnessed a mob of my father's, my father had soccer teams as well, a mob of guys beating a guy half to death as kids while he was begging for his life, bleeding, couldn't breathe properly, said he needed water and they sprayed him with a hose pipe. I remember one boy hitting him with a broom and it broke. I remember when they eventually dragged him into the house because he tried to steal one of my father's dogs. They fastened him under the basin in the, in the bathroom and I remember this one guy who jammed. I thought he was going to stab this guy in front of us but he took the back of his knife and he, he, the way he hit this guy's head. As a child, as a child you see that stuff and you're like, I will never be the same again. <laughs> okay, I'll never be the same again. I think I need to go for therapy. But there are so many things that some of us experience and I could advise listening to the stories of depressed suicidal people. I could advise spending time with therapists. I could advise watching shows of like tragic, you know, you're like, my life's bad, but have you seen the poverty in Sudan? But the danger is you might think you're training your mind, but that stuff might break you. <laughs> so it's, it's so fragile, but we have to try. The last point I think I'm going to say is this, and I don't know how much time we have left. Do we still have time? Three minutes. Three minutes! Nah. Jeez, we're going to have to shut it down. Yeah, I'm reading a lot. Sorry. 15, 15, 15 minutes on the main. Three, yeah. three minutes on, on mine. Um, when I started to do Vusi Tembuwayo on the panel show, one of the things I said to him, your belief, mm. and I welcome all the people that are going to be watching to share if you've ever been depressed, suicidal, and what triggered you, and if you bounce back, how you bounce back. You, your belief of what causes depression largely is pressure. Mm. That's what I'm taking out from yep. you. A lot of external societal pressure, especially on the man, to provide, to have a woman who is faithful and is perfect, to always be happy and solve all problems, you know, to succeed. I said to Vusi, considering I've experienced depression myself and I've spoken to so many people and I've consulted so many, I think the biggest issue we have is from birth, we are plugged into the matrix mm. and we are told you're on the soccer field these are the rules the objective is to score goals you must score five goals these are your teammates go mm. and we then have to try and forge our lives into this i need to get a's in school mm. i need to get exemption and get into tertiary uh, i need to go and get a good wife i need to get a good job i need to have children and provide for my kids I need to be great in society. I need to be good looking. I need to not have a big tummy. I need to... And then there's who you are versus who you are supposed to be. Mm. Are we still good? Sabonga Eskom, na ANC. Danke komolo se ngustuja lukes. Bastards. There is who you are supposed to be in the matrix yeah. and then there's who you are. Yeah. which has been cultivated over many generations of our ancestors coming together, hunting, going in the mountains, mm. chilling in the sun, mm. uh, slaughtering, being in love, raising kids. And who we are has to fight who we're meant to be. Mm. And I said to him, I have this vision of a board of directors mm. in our heads. Your parents... Udani no Raida, your grandparents, obviously, Umamiaga too, yeah, Telela, yeah, Mkuluaku Amin, you've got Umsongelo, you've got Umamlaba. That's just the baseline of the board. Mm. Then the board branches, yeah. all these people, and they sit around and all their experiences, and then you put them in this space where you're like, I need to make money, and they're all like, What's that? And you're like, No, I need to get the yellow bone with the big ass. Oh. And they're like, Huh? And it's like, I must start a business. And they're like, why are you, why are you on a plane? What? And I think psychologically, we haven't, been, we haven't been gentle, especially as a black person who, is, who has been forcefully traumatized into a Western world. 
to adjust comfortably from a psychological point that's cognitive dissonance. Cogni Take a 35-year-old guy who's just been living his life, chowing donuts, mm. put him on a rugby field, England versus the All Blacks, press play, and let a huge 110 kg built guy who's been playing rugby all his life mm. come running at him and say, no, just tackle. Come mm. on, bro, just make money. Bro, why don't you just get the girl? You're like, sure, I'll... And you break your oh. shoulder, your collarbone, and everyone's like, ah, this guy you is break. weak. And you're like... You break. There's who we are and who we are supposed to be. And not everyone is born good-looking mm. in a functional country under a progressive religion or culture with all the options in the world. Oh, I'm not really good at academics. I'm good at sports. Oh, I don't like the thick yellow bones. I like the African sisters, the duck bone, mm. who's into poetry. We don't have these options. And I actually think I want to be gay. You know, I want to mm. come out the closet. And you're like, oh, there's a world for you here. Mm. And you're like, who I am and who we were is I liked man booty. Mm. And now I'm living in this world where I have to be with a woman and I don't want. Mm. I don't want to be a father. Mm. I don't want to be a single mom. Mm. I, and I think those clashes, when they happen, at some point, the board of directors and the external world, what you call pressure, mm. your brain collapses. Mm. And when it collapses, generally one of two things happens. The first one could be you've shattered everything. Kanye West through the wire. Mm. Car accident, I died. That's the Jesus moment. Mm. He's been crucified. Now you have a chance to resurrect. And he's like, fuck it, I'm going hard in the music. Mm. He becomes a Kanye West that we love because he died and was reborn. Mm. And in his rebirth, where before the car accident, he was scared. Ah, is Dame Dash going to like my music? Ah, what? Now he doesn't give a fuck. No, I don't care. Because he's like, yeah. I died. I don't give a fuck, yeah. This is my Phoenix moment. Yeah. And now I don't care. The next person dies, the mind breaks, and they die. Mm. And now they go through the motions of depression until they actually switch off the lights. And they're like, actually, I'm dead. And it's always tough in that space. Because now, because I've been depressed... I look at my mind and I've managed to rebuild it and I mm. fear for my kids, your kids as well. I fear that if they ever get to what I got to and my board of directors fights with the real world and they clash, will they choose the path I chose? Because at any given time, I could have been like, nah, let's switch off the light. You know, Siang Nang calls it blowing the whistle, but the game is over. Or I'll be like, no, I'm going to climb the mountain through the dirt. You saw that candy shop story mm. of a guy has to climb up the mountain. And you become this animal. David Goggins, the callous man. David Goggins could have taken his life, but he took the hard path of, I will build myself into a fucking machine. And when you become that, you fear no man. You fear nothing. And even though there'll be tough times, you're like, I've died before, bro. You and I were in a car accident mm. with the Ngomalo brothers and Ntutu Kwaklaba. Mm. That was a death. And we were like, we're... I think some of us have had many, many deaths, yeah. metaphoric. Yeah. And we come back strong. And for other people, they haven't had that. And you're going to have your first death at age 45 with a wife and, and three kids and a great business. And your business collapses and you find out two of your kids are not yours. And your wife has been sleeping with your brother. And you find out everything you thought was real. Your surname is not even yours. You've been beating your chest. Like, oh, actually, everything that you thought you were disappears anyways i'll stop there that's fucking deep that's a that was a deep rant eh? that was that was that was some serious shit we're gonna have to speak about it but uh, i think in closing you want to close last no 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 I've, I've i've had my two cents no we're closing now yeah sing Korean. no we're just just a message to the gents yeah man sorry um, to the ladies by the way this is particular to yeah. male depression and suicide and and to be honest I hope for a lot of the ladies watching this, you will understand that the reason we're doing this, and if we get it right, is that your boyfriend, your, your brother, son, your, son. your son, your father are going to become better men and make yeah. your life easier so that you don't have to deal with some of the strain and stresses you have. Yeah, so just, just ending off uh, with me. Guys, guys, it's tough out there. So don't, don't be a hero. Like, find a circle so you can just chat, offload some of the stuff. Um, we all go through these pressures. It's not just you. You're not weak. You're not the only guy. Don't, don't let social media fool you. Gents are out there struggling financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. 
the, the cool guys that you think are getting all the girls, they're also going through challenges with their relationships. They might get cheated on, whatever the case may be. So it's not just you, bro. It's not just you. So make sure that you find a space that you can actually be yourself, talk to those people. You know, uh, in my opinion, it would be people that love you unconditionally. Find those people. And once you find them, offload, be vulnerable. You know, find people that you can trust, that you can be vulnerable. And then, guys. So again, this will happen multiple times. There's always seasons in Piluin. So it won't just be once off, but at least you'll have a little bit more tools to be able to deal with the next one, you know. And the more you can create these safe spaces, you also understand when you start slowly getting back into a bit of a, a hot space, talk to those people, you know, and understand that your brother's also going through it, your friend is going through it, your son is going through it. So don't just, when you see patterns start changing, bring those people. Stand down, it's cool, son, you know. But yeah, that's... Thanks, bro. That's my bit. Uh, bit of marketing. Buy my book. Um, I do online consultations. This actually is marketing. Yeah. I do online consultations. I charge bastards. So we can buy memory cards, of course, for the gents. Mm -hmm. um, I do online consultations. I speak to a lot of people. If you ever need to chat, I'm here. My brother's here. Uh, I think we've said before, you guys can invite us to your space. Maybe you're a coach of a sports team. Maybe you're a teacher in some school. Maybe you're a pastor or something at a church. Invite us. We'll come through. Maybe give us a little bit of petrol. If you can give us a bit more than petrol, we can even invite the crew to come through and film um, and let us come in and connect, you know. This is if you don't have people in your life. If you have people in your life, forget about us. Go and find your father, your uncle, and follow the energy. You can feel when you're speaking to someone that they hear you or they're not hearing you. A lot of kids found solace listening to Eminem, Marshall Mathers growing up. A lot of kids found solace listening to DMX being angry. Um, find the type of heroes, man. Kendrick, J. Cole. There are people out there who actually speak to us and it's, it's pretty dope and we appreciate them. Don't, don't die before your time. It's not cool. You hurt a lot of people and there's a way out. And there are always solutions. I've got solutions for broke fathers. I've got solutions. I can tell you how to be a better dad without money. I've got solutions for mothers and women who are maybe, maybe the men in your life need to hear something. Um... But this is not an easy thing. I normally explain depression to people that don't understand it and people who are in denial of it as a flu of the mind. It is always easy to be like, oh, I can hear he's coughing. I can see his nose is running. Uh, he says he's got a sore throat. We know that it's fine. Um, if you, if you, you've injured your leg, we see you limping or we see a scar. What happens when you have something like internal bleeding? <laughs> Can't see it. What happens if your mind has taken a knock? We can't see it, but some of us see it through external. Why is this guy not eating? Why is this guy not smiling anymore? I normally am like, hey, where's that ugly girlfriend of yours? And he normally laughs. Today's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man, she's, you're like, okay, something's not lacquer here, mm. you know? So we try to read it, read the inside from the outside. So it is a flu of the mind. And just like flu, flu takes time. And yes, there's meds. Flu is a virus, so there's no cure for it, but you let it ride out. You let your immune system get stronger. Flow, a flu of the mind, like depression, there are ways. You can exercise. You can drink water. You can be with loving people. Go home. Hug your mom if you have a mom. If your mom is toxic, stay away stay from away your from, mom. Stay away from Go to people that will cook you a nice meal. Listen to music. Visit the spaces as a child that made you happy. And go and refine yourself. There are solutions out there and we are here to help you. But this episode was too short because it's a very deep layered topic and we will address it at some point again. But we look forward to reading a lot of your comments. Share this video for awareness because maybe not us, but someone in your circle maybe has been wishing to speak to you. And after you share this video, they'll actually gain the confidence to be like, bro, I've been wanting to chat. I'm seeing flames. Curate your social media. Stop consuming things that are triggering your mind and stay away from spaces. Block, unfollow in real life spaces that make you feel some type of way. Pen and pen. We'll see you guys soon and we love you guys very much. Cheers.